I lost it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, you're oh we're alive! Oh, oh, wait, oh. <laughs> hey, there we go. Should you just let up behind me? Maybe. Okay, we'll try it. Keep talking. Hey guys, Hello. one second. We're working on it. Oh, hey, there we go. That's less blinding. Okay. There we go. Awesome. I have like a weird halo. What's that Beyonce right. song where she sings about a halo? Oh. Halo, halo. Yeah, I wasn't gonna try and sing that. All right. Hey, fangirls and fanboys, what up? What up? Uh, it's a lovely Tuesday evening, and uh, we're just sitting here ah! enjoying some French fries with chicken salt from New Zealand. We like really just went straight for it and didn't even. Mm -hmm. it doesn't taste like anything to me. Does that taste like anything? Mm. I don't know if that. I know. <laughs> we get. It's salty. It is salty salt. Um. Um. I kind of taste like Lowry's a little bit. Yeah, it does taste a little like Lowry's. Look at me. I quite taste the chicken, though. No, it doesn't taste chicken. Which is weird. Well, it's kind of in the like, aftertaste, though. Wait. There is maybe like a chicken broth aftertaste. There is like a chicken. Yeah, it's a little bit broth. I like it's. It's good. It's, it's not good. bad. I feel good about it. Yeah. We were a little bit worried. It was. <laughs> we were a little scared after the Marmite incident. Yeah. We're not going to lie to you, Mel. Good Lord. We were just scared. Uh, so, anyways, hey, everybody. Tonight. We have coming on the show, Mr. Alex Jacob, winner of Whoa! the Jeopardy Tournament of Champions in 2015. He will be here at approximately 8.30 after, of course, he gets home from his trivia because that's what he does. Um, so we if you have- that. We understand that. Yeah. If you have any questions for him, things you want to ask or trivia questions you want to stump him with, feel free to put those in our Q&A so that we can hopefully uh, see see what you have to say to him. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just clicking around to try to make sure that we uh, we are paying attention to everybody. I also forgot to tweet this. Hey, get your phone and tweet this for me. Oh, <laughs> what am I tweeting? <laughs> that we're here. Oh, that we're Online, here. getting ready. I should have tweeted it from my account. I thought I was bleeding, but I had just white on my finger. <laughs> you guys, oh my we're a little bit of a mess tonight, but. Uh, this may or may not be terrible. May or may not be terrible. Uh, this is it's gonna be fun because we're we're winging it a little bit. Listen, you guys, Alex Jacob hosts uh, trivia on the Twitter. Um, he on goes the and, Twitter, and, yeah, on the Tweety. He tweets out links. Everybody can go in on this other app called Discord and play trivia with him. So I uh, decided to take part the other night in uh, trivia. I highly recommend everybody do this. His his Twitter username is at who is Alex Jacob. Um, and it's like a fun thing, camaraderie with a bunch of people. It's all it's all good times, and uh, yeah, it's so I would recommend doing that. But at that point, this was two days ago. Um, Alex was like, "Okay, so your podcast you record Tuesdays," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we do." Um, and he was like, "All right, how about this week?" And uh, so it's uh, we haven't had a lot of preparation. But we're gonna win. no preparation. No preparation. Zero <laughs> preparation. Not, I cannot emphasize enough how little we have thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alex, but we were just we were enthusiastic about the whole ordeal. Which totally makes up for it. Yeah. Don't so worry. before we get into that, there's um, many a shows where we haven't thought about it at all. Which that's not that's fine. true. That's actually that's Probably. Probably more often than not, we haven't given a lot of thought to what we're going to say. Um, we should do some kind of quiz so people can figure it out when we've thought about it and when we are totally just shooting from the hip. That's a really good point. Can you tell if we won it? New fan cave game. Did we wing it? That's, Did we wing it? It's an ongoing game mm -hmm. for every episode. At the end of every episode, we want you know. We want you to response. vote wings up or wings down. Wings <laughs> down. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> like you won it or you didn't want it. You didn't want it. Is won it a word? I don't know. You guys, I love French fries more than yeah. life. I came in here with this thing of McDonald's French fries, and like it was first thing. Krista was just like, "Oh God!" and started shoving them in. in I was her like, mouth. "You didn't buy me on my own." Yeah, she was a little worried, but I just ate dinner, so we're okay. Uh, I did too. I mean, that didn't stop me. Yeah, um, Kristen, what are we? Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about today? What's on? Um, what's on the old agenda? Tell them what's on the agenda while well, I go grab my. Oh, right. We have got. Quite, you're sick of this in the chicken salt. Um, we've got some great things. We've got some trailers we're going to talk about. A couple of new trailers. A western. Oh, totally my fave. A not western, but also a period piece. And a superhero one. 
You bet you can't guess what it is. Probably can. We're also going to talk about a little Chris Pratt and the Chris Pratt Corner. Chris Pratt Corner. Um, some exciting Black Panther news. And probably the most exciting news of all, which we'll save as a surprise because we're so excited about it. Oh my gosh. I can't even I can't even explain how excited I am yeah. right now. So So first we're gonna talk about trailers. Trailers. But we're gonna start with one that you probably haven't seen yet, or maybe you have. Also, I don't know where we are. Um <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Found it. Nailed it. The first one is a western, and I think you guys all know how much I love westerns and feel like there's an underused genre. Corey thinks it's kind of outdated. We agree to disagree on this point, but <laughs> There's a new one. Natalie Portman, Joel Edgerton, Nola em Nola. That's not his name. Noel Emmerich, Ewan McGregor. Not really sure what's going on. Apparently, no. it seems to be that Jane. Seem oh God, how do I almost call her Jane Seymour? <laughs> I was like, that's not who that is. <laughs> this is 2015. It's not Jane Seymour. I wish it was. Oh my gosh, if it was a Doctor Who Medicine Woman movie on the big screen. Oh my gosh. And she's like 60 years old. Now. I don't even think I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. It's so magical. <laughs> it's not. It's not really important. It's not. It, she's got a husband who is apparently some sort of outlaw or something. Yeah. And I think he's probably been shot and he's laying on his stomach. So he's probably been shot in the butt or fell on a cactus. And that's Noah Emmerich. It is Noah Emmerich. So. He fell on a cactus. That's probably it. That's <laughs> visible. <more. laughs> Whole exciting incident. Of he this was movie. running and he fell on a cactus. Could happen to anybody. Could. Um, Joel Edgerton appears to be her ex lover. <laughs> And Ooh. she goes to him for assistance to help with these um, people who are trying to get her husband. It's a little watery on the plot, <laughs> although I feel like they take her daughter at some point. Maybe. Um, it's it's it looks cool because I like it because she's not in like a prairie dress. She's in one of those like dresses that's also like. But I'm also a gunslinger. It's a yeah, gunslinger that's dress. true. Like she looks hardcore. The thing I have, I have, I don't know. My Natalie Portman relationship is like a little fraught. Really? Like. like it's oh, not okay. that I don't like her. Her face is very symmetrical. It is. She's very pretty. I. It's not that I don't like her. It's that sometimes I have trouble believing her. Because she just, to me, she comes across like I believe her when she's playing kind of like an uptight white woman. Like that's what I feel like mm. she seems like she would be. And so. She seems uptight in this. She like does she seem should. uptight, but like oh, in yeah. a rightful, like, because people are trying to kill me and my husband sort of way. So I don't know if I like entirely buy. But it seems like her husband's a bad guy. He does Although Noah Emmerich doesn't, he's not usually a bad guy, is he? He, I just keep thinking of him from, I don't know, every time I, I feel like he's like usually. Like Truman Show or. Or um, The Americans, he's an FBI. I mean, when I, I didn't watch, finish watching The Americans because it stressed me out too much. But he was like technically the good guy because he was like the FBI agent, even though you yeah. didn't really want him to catch them, which was like very confusing because they were Okay, spoiler bad. alert. Uh, <laughs> um, you I'm learned that kidding. in like the I'm first episode. Kidding. Uh. I'm trying to think. There's something he's very distinctly a bad guy in. I know he is on, um, what's Aziz Ansari's show? Ma no. Ma Master of None? Master of None. He's a bad guy, but he kind of has like a, a turnaround at the end. But he's like a super jerk. But I know there's something he's in where like he's really like sleazy. <gasps> is it? Wait. I was going to say cellular, but I think I'm wrong. But it's something along those lines. Oh, cellular is Jason Statham. Yeah, it's not Jason Statham. Oh, my God. I'm going to IMDb this and figure it out. But anyways, that's happening. Oh, and the movie is called Jane, Jane Got, Got a, Gun. a Gun. Is that is that an Aerosmith reference? Do you I don't think? really know. I only know the one Aerosmith song from Armageddon. So, oh, they had a song I loved when I was a kid. It was called Janie's Got a Gun. Mm. Janie's Got a Gun. Maybe that song will be in there, but in like a cool like remix way. Yeah, there's gonna be like a like a really soothing voice like Janie's Got. No, 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 no. It's gonna be like Janie's Got. It's gonna be like. Jamie got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really modern take on that. Well, no, yeah, thing, it's gonna be a modern. It's a remix. The thing now, though, is that like you take a song and you put it in like kind of a creepy, soothing voice. Like that's the way all the trailers. Right, work. but I don't feel like that there works with no the theme of this movie. This, this theme of this movie is a gritty western, so it needs to have a gritty voice to sing the song. I guess. You know, it's got to be a guy that smoked eight packs a day. And mm -hmm. It's like Phoebe Buffay's sick voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's who should sing this song. A Timely Friends reference? What? <laughs> That's what you get here in Fan Cave. It's true. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, so we're, uh, I don't know. I, I, know, here's the thing. I know I complain because there aren't, um, pre yes, we are, Rianne. We are together. We are together, producer. <laughs> um. I know I complain that there's not enough westerns, and then I feel like every time there's a western, I'm like, nah. I guess I 
I'm like, I'm like a very just. I although I you am, know what you want. I know what I want, and it's. Not I'm happening. waiting for a Magnificent Seven remake. I'm pretty sure that's the one I've been waiting for. Is there not one? There is one. It's, it's got out. Chris Pratt and Denzel Washington. I was, I was say Will Smith. Ooh, I'm getting my. Oh my gosh. I'm also, sorry. BTW, I just watched The Equalizer. That movie is bananas. Oh, it's so good. I really wanted to see that. I he. Seen it yet. I just love, I've always loved Denzel. I watch, I watch things later and I'm like, why did I watch this movie with him? But then I'm like, I'm glad I did because I just love him so much. He's yeah. just wonderful. And mm -hmm. this movie is good. Uh, what was it? Uh, John Q was on the other day, <laughs> and I almost watched it, and then I was like, I don't feel like sobbing yeah. to death right now. Yeah. That's you can't watch that. You know what I watched the other day and sobbed unusually hard? Mm. Titanic. Mm. I I never liked Titanic growing up, but you know, the other day we watched it, big screen, all that kind of stuff, and the next thing I knew, I'm just sitting there like constantly, just like, oh, yeah. gross, <sighs> oh, you bitch. Man. She never let go, and then she does. There. If you name your daughter Rose, of words. she'll it's... probably be a liar. Yeah. And like, <laughs> just her little like, oh, of the heart of the sea. No one would effing do that. Why does she do that? If she's kinda... like, she's like, I'm 101 years old. I do what I want. I'm Rose I'm like, DeWitt. Put it in a museum. Yeah. It, it has belongs to the museum. It has historical significance. Yeah. To me, that just hurts my soul. Because it's, it's, yeah, that's the it's thing. like it's no one practical. can appreciate it now that it's, I mean, it's not like you're selling it to someone for their private auction. Like you could have done some kind of good with it, but instead you toss it into the, sorry, into the ocean. Did I not tweet it, right? I didn't put the link. I didn't have it. That's, that's okay. This is from my, my Twitter. Anyway, so... Yeah, but that, I mean, that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying Denzel makes me Today, cry. I was talking about, um, what was I talking about? Sports. Yeah, why were you talking about I mean, sports? We were, I don't know why we were talking about this. And this lady was like, we were sitting at lunch for, we had like a staff work party thing. And she goes, oh, what, like what sport? I was like, all sports. All sports make, I think it was about sports. Something, something that makes me cry. Mm. Or I'm a sucker for. Oh, like sports of, movies. Well, not, like not sports, even though. It was like more just. Cry? You guys, if you put on the video of Carrie Strug in the 96 okay. Olympics, well, yeah. if you put on that freaking Visa commercial with Morgan Freeman and the guy pulls his hammy and the dad comes running out and helps him across the finish line, do you remember that? No, it's I miss so that. beautiful. It's like, this guy's in the Olympics and he's running, he pulls a hamstring, it's this mortified moment, his dad jumps out over the barricades, grabs him, and like, he hobbles across the finish line and it's so great. Or like things like that, you know, Abby Wambeck's header against Brazil in the World Cup. Yeah, you lost me there. Brandy Chastain ripping her shirt is. off <sighs> against China. I mean, these moments that get you. Okay. You know, or but then again, like, give me the end of Miracle. Give me any speech and remember the Titans. Give me the end so of the sports movies. That give me the end of the replacements, and it's not even a real story. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, this place was just great. Anyway, yeah. I don't know why we're talking. I don't know about crying. I'm a weeper, you guys. I cry at lots of both weepers. Let's, let's be real about it. Um, I'm Melanie, a weeper. Puts, De Melanie tells us Denzel is the man, and oh. uh, I think we both agree with you. Also, Denzel's been married now. to his wife for like a million years. A million. Just like forever. Oh, like they God. were born married to each other. I I think. Think. They've definitely been married a lot longer than we've been alive. Definitely. I think that's worth pointing out. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Mm. Another trailer. <laughs> okay. The next so the thing. next one is Russell Crowe. I'm not really sure who he. I think he's like a fixer or something. I'm not yeah. really sure what he is. Anyway, it's like in the um, 60s, 70s. Wait, is it a period? I, I didn't realize that. I thought everybody just dressed funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a period movie. I clearly wasn't paying a whole lot I think of attention. It's the 60s or 70s. I think it's the 70s maybe. Anyway, uh, he's like a some kind of like bully that like if you probably if you owe someone money he beats you up and then you're whatever. So the movie opens up where he like beats the crap out of Ryan Gosling, who's like just adorable PI. It's just funny. And then anyway, so the, the point of the movie, which is ridiculous, they're trying to save some girl's daughter who, I don't know, got mixed up with the mob and as you do. As you do. And Russell Crowe gets hired to kind of find her. And so he brings in he brings in Ryan Gosling's character, who it's almost like he doesn't really seem like he wants to help. No. It's kind of like the Kevin Hart and the Rock movie. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, but it the part when he was sitting on the toilet and he had the gun, he I was. was just giggling. He's like, I'm and giggling. I couldn't stop. I'm like, I was like, didn't really have high help. I'm like, oh, this is kind of lame. I'm like, <laughs> scene happened. I'm like, 
<laughs> right? It's, it's just Ryan Gosling being silly and funny, which he usually is very serious. But like he wasn't. Remember, like this is this is a thing. I think for all of us who were Ryan Gosling early adopters, it's so fun to see him goofy because that's like that's what he was. And I think we talked, didn't we talk about this like a week or two ago? Like, oh, we did. We did. remember the Titans era Ryan Gosling he, and Breaker. But he High. wasn't even this goofy Ryan Gosling. I don't know. I just feel like, it's, like Breaker High. You know, he was always like dancing, doing weird things. Well, and, I don't you know, know if that movie is. No, the, the show, Breaker High. It yeah. was on right after Sweet Valley High. Mm, don't watch it. Ugh, you're killing me, Smalls. Sorry. You're goddamn killing me. Um, anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, funny. anyways, it looks kind of entertaining. Go to That's after funny. this blog. Well, like we said, not really sure what's going on in it. The yeah. girl this is our theme is like movie trailers. Movie trailers always either give you too much or, or like, not enough. just like nothing. And you're like, I'm intrigued by. It. I think it looks kind of funny. I don't know if I'd pay. I'm, I don't know if I'd pay to go see it in the theater. Right. Maybe someone will ask me on a date, and I can ask them to take me to see it. Hey. <laughs> that was not an Attention invitation. Attention, listeners. That was not an invitation. <laughs> Hashtag probably why I'm single. Uh, Hashtag definitely. Why I'm single. Kristen, like you're. As I eat is, all of these fries. You can only see part of Kristen's body right now, but it's like the most unladylike position on the planet. You just gotta like leg in the air. You I'm know. almost man. I'm she, almost. She's I'm man spreading. Man, dude. Okay, my boss was man spreading today in a meeting. He's like <laughs> one of our old, bigger bosses. Who doesn't usually sit in on our like little staff meetings. And he, he's like, "Oh, can I sit in on your meeting?" We're like, "Sure." And he was man spreading hard where i'm like this is really distracting yeah like you can't stop looking so i'm like trying to still listen to him talk but he's like i mean i was like and if you guys don't know what man spreading is it's that thing where guys like you know their legs are just like and it's one thing when i understand you don't want to like put your yeah, legs you know. to, i don't i don't need you to like put your legs your knees to together them. that's not where we're at i don't need your knees together but i also don't need you to like i mean it's just almost like, like pray mantis spreading yeah and it's awkward and gross, and no one wants to see it. Nobody wants. To, nobody wants to see that. And we really don't want you like touching us when you're doing it. That's, yeah, that's the real problem. That's also I took a picture on the Max in Oregon a few years ago that this guy was like full on man spreading, but I was sitting across from him, and like it's unreal, you guys. My legs were just in between his, and his are like wrapped around Ow. mine. And I'm like, why? Come on, why bro. Why would you do a thing like this? You know, it's mm, just like. Dislike. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, we're, talking we're winging it. Oh, we were talking about that movie, The Good Guys. Oh, the Good Guys. The, the nice, nice Guys. guys. Nice Guys. Are, uh, see, okay, so there's like the Nice Guys. There was the other. I I keep wanting to call it the other guys. Yeah. And isn't there a Good Guys? Is that I'm or sure is that not is. a is that not a movie? Sure there is the Good Guys. Wasn't that a Ooh, more a creative TV show with um, um, Colin Hanks and? Uh, Oh, Bradley yeah. and Bradley Whitford. Yeah, there you go. This is it's like the a something man movies too. A serious man, a single man, a most unfortunate man. I think a I know that man. <laughs> yeah, uh, an a elephant man's, man. A man spreader. Yeah, the man spreading man, a man splaining man. Speaking of mans, mans, man, 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 man. Batman versus Superman. We got another trailer. We did, and I'll tell you what. This trailer almost tanked miserably. Almost tanked? Tanked. It was almost the worst trailer ever. It was also, oh, and it was really due to one person. One. Can you say it with me now? Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg. We did not coordinate. It's so terrible. It's so bad. Like, at first I thought it was a joke. Like, we, this can't be the guy that took, because in the first one, he wasn't super into it. I remember he said that one weird thing. Yeah, where he like, had the stupid line. And we're like, like well, uh, okay, well, you're not going to hold it against him. Yeah. But there was more of him in this trailer, and it was, like, like he wasn't trying to act at all. It was, like, so over the top. Like, it was bizarre. It, it was, because it doesn't fit the movie either. No. Like, it's like, this movie's very serious. Yeah, and, like, really gritty, dark. Gritty and movie. supposed to be, like, a sad kind of looks depressing, and he was, like, I don't know. It was weird. It was terrible. So I'm watching it. I'm like, all I could focus on was how weird and terrible he was. Yeah. So I'm watching it. I'm like, God, this trailer's not doing it for me. And it's then right. all of a freaking sudden, it looks like Batman and Superman get blown up. And you're like, what the hell? Yeah, what happened? Did they just <laughs> kill them? Freaking Gal Gadot <laughs> as Wonder Woman swoops in and saves the day. And Batman kind of, Superman looks at Batman and goes, I thought she was with you. And Batman's <laughs> like, I thought she was with you. And I was like, 
Yeah, she ain't with what? either of you suckers. She's on her own and kicks ass all by herself. Yes. I think we've already talked about how stoked we are that Gal Gadot is in this, mainly because we just love her because mm -hmm. she's beautiful and strong and amazing and wonderful yes. and awesome. Mm -hmm. I just, it's she looks forever. freaking, is she even say anything? Did she say anything? I don't she think she says say anything. Because nope. she didn't have to. That's yeah. why. Mm -mm. This makes me even more excited for the Wonder Woman movie, which exactly. I'm a little bit bummed because I know we got to wait now even longer. Yeah. But yeah. can I also say, though, that Ben Affleck was working it. This. Ben Affleck's got that salt and pepper thing oh. going on. And that's so beautiful. He makes Henry Cavill look like a peon. Like, oh, I don't know if I go that far. I'm just saying. I was like, mm, who's this Henry guy? Ben Affleck. I don't think I fucked it. They both have those jaw lines that are just magnificent. <laughs> it's so magnificent. Well, like, I can, I'm a sucker for a good jaw line. Yeah, and that yeah. salt and pepper hair, you know? That, that, it does something it. for it because he's like an older Batman who's like angry and sad. and Yeah. Oh, man. Word. I'm excited. I'm still stoked to see it. Obviously, even though Jesse Eisenberg seems to be ruining it, he's lucky that Gal Gadot is going to save him. So, exactly. Everyone was, should like, be thankful like, for Gal. Who made that decision? We were talking about this with like my friend. Auditions. It was funny. I was texting my friend, and you know, like as you're texting, they're texting, so you kind of text at the same time. Yeah. And we both were like, oh, Jesse Eisenberg. We were both saying the same thing about him, and we're like, who made that? I don't know, you know? And I was like, you know who would have been a good one? Because if we had to be a young guy, Michael have, Rosenbaum. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So, well, there's the thing, because they want him to be young, yeah, apparently, yeah. right? I said Nicholas Holt. Yeah. I'm on board. Wouldn't that have been such a good choice? That would have been a good choice. I know, it would have been I mean, a good at this choice. point, I'm kind of Nicholas Holt for everything. That's true. So, Which reminds me, my sister-in-law borrowed my Warm Bodies movie. I need to get it back. Oh, I need to make a note. Yeah. I'll remind myself later. I don't want to make a note now. But anyway... <laughs> So Jesse Eisenberg sucks. Gal Gadot's freaking awesome. Oh, and I think we already talked about the fact that we already talked about the Chris Pine picture, right? Where he's yes, be, okay. we did. We're very excited about the Wonder Woman movie, which is a bummer because we're getting way ahead of ourselves. But yeah. but that's nothing be, new. Yeah, that's true. That's we, the thing we do. We often. tend to be overexcited about things that are coming in yeah. other times of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Nailed okay. It. Here we go. Chris Pratt corner. <laughs> Smack this corner. adorable video has um, arisen so from the interwebs, and it's not only Chris Pratt, but the second most adorable person, maybe couldn't actually be time for first. Yeah, it's exactly. hard to choose. In Dave Bautista um, auditioning for Drax and Star Lord, mm -hmm. they're doing like a screen test. Not even really auditioning. I don't, I don't know. If it's yeah, it's not. It's clearly not like an audition because yeah, they're more in like a, some sort of costume. Like Drax yeah. is completely made up, and, so except he's just got the gray, which is weird. Yeah. But, but it's anyway. like so it's like some sort of screen test, I think. Yeah. And, um it's so adorable. And it, it it's a it's a scene, it's one of the one of my favorite scenes yeah. with Drax where it's it's when they first kind of meet and Drax is about to kill Gamora and, and uh, Star Lord trying to talk like, him out of it. <laughs> trying to talk him out of it, he's like, then you can this. <laughs> and he's yeah, like he the finger why would it. I put my finger across my throat? <laughs> and you're like, oh Drax. <sighs> so and, little. Yeah, and it's funny because they clearly don't have their lines memorized because he's sort of yeah. keeps saying the same thing over and over. It's just cute. It's, it's just like this wonderful. And then they make each other laugh. Yeah, at the end they're kind of like giggling and being adorable and wonderful and oh Yeah, this I clearly need to get that Blu-ray with the special features that have that action on it. Oh my gosh, it's just so wonderful. Yeah, they're just Magnificent. By the way, can I say something in yeah. by way of improvements to the podcast? I got a new like setup at my house. Um, so sorry, this is so crappy. <laughs> okay, hold on, um, and I will answer that in a moment. But um, I have this whole rig where I can do the Chris Pratt corner sound effect live on the air. Ooh. Yeah, and our intro and outro and everything. It's pretty bomb, you guys. That's fancy pants. Keo says, I thought you and Corrigan existed in separate time-space continuums. How are you both in same place and time? Sorry if answered earlier, late viewer. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We do exist, or do we, on the same plane? I finally just, like, know. reached through Kristen right now. <gasps> <gasps> this is really Earth 2, for those of you who watched that. Wow. TBT. Earth too, nice. Um, anyways, yes, we are we are in the same place in Kristen's home. And it's, it's, a, it's a delightful day. Uh, so yeah, watch that. It'll be up on the blog, electricfeast.com. You can check out that adorable link. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. Just you know, wetting your guardians of the galaxy mm -hmm. appetite while we wait for the um, actual things. The actual thing to come out. 
Uh, In other superhero news, ooh. tell us. Uh, so we found out this week that uh, the director of Creed, Ryan Coogler, will be potentially. Did it? Was it official? I don't know. I think it might be like still like. I honestly rumored. just. I honestly just opened the link to look at the picture. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Rumored to be directing. Black Not Panther. Civil War. This Not guy. Civil War. Black Panther in the back with the meow on him. Black Panther. Also, Which here's is- my deal. I was a little annoyed that they were like, see Chadwick Boseman dressed up, you know, as his Black Panther. I was like, oh, and I clicked on him all. This could literally be anybody. That could be anybody. This could be Chadwick Boseman's, like, assistant. This could be a woman in that costume for all we know, because we know they add muscles to it. That's true. It's like um, in when Iron Man 3 was coming out, uh, they were like, I, of course, I follow all James Badgedale things. It was like, see first, you know, pictures of James Badgedale as Iron Patriot, you know? Yeah. And then, like, looked at it, and I was like, that's, it's just like a costume. And then when they showed one without the head on it, it clearly yeah. wasn't him. It was just some guy in the costume. Yeah. <laughs> like, are they really going to bother to get the actual actor, fly them from wherever they are to yeah. put them in, like, a costume? Well, here's the thing. is clearly... Black Panther is in Captain Miracle. So, Miracle? <laughs> Captain Miracle! Captain Miracle! That's he the, saves Christmas! Yeah, next on Hallmark Channel, Captain Miracle. Oh my god. I'm in. What if it was Mrs. Miracle's son and he was a war hero and he came back and helped people get together? That's like all the best Hallmark tropes meet superheroes. I think I'm going to cry just thinking about it. I know. We should write this and then submit it for next year's should, season. Totally. Because I think it takes them like 15 minutes to make these movies. So, totally. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Chadwick Boseman. Oh yeah, and whether clearly he was filming him. a movie. Like they could have taken a picture of him at any time. <laughs> like it's not like they had to fly him in specifically for him. He was in costume at some point. Yeah, it's, uh, take yeah, a picture. Point. Just take a picture. I know you got a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what was it that we just saw that had the uh, the cell phone picture? Um, oh yeah, sorry, Alex Jacob just uh, messaged me. He's on his he's on his way. Um, yeah. And uh, so if you're tired of listening to us, just hold on just a little bit. Just hold on a little bit longer. And not Creed the band, Keo. Creed the movie. Keo, which I saw. I'm going to let you ask questions. Yeah, you're, you're going to be banned from asking questions. I know. Corey saw it, and I want to see it, and I was supposed to go see it, and then we didn't. I didn't get to see it, but I want to see it. So. Good story. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good, I hear. Yeah, it was wicked good. Um, oh, it had to be. I knew it had to be. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't even know what to say about it. Like, it was. Almost like I knew that it was going to be good, but it was surprisingly so. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I just, I, I really appreciated uh, that movie a lot. And I appreciate that now Black Panther is going to be, uh, could you even see? Keo says Chadwick Boseman was awesome in 42. I didn't know we even saw oh, that movie. I love oh, 42. Yeah, for, we went and saw that together. We did? Yeah, we did. Did we cry? Probably. I did. I'm yeah. sure I did. <laughs> I imagine we both did did cry during Oh, that. that's right, because stupid Lucas Black was in it. We yeah, <laughs> right? We talked about Lucas Black. Right. Oh, um, Lucas Black. Lucas Black. That freaking guy is a life ruiner. Guy. He has a life ruiner. Oh, no, I just closed our notes. Oh, All is lost. Oh, um, must be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> we are oh, failing. Too bad I like sent you all of these things after I realized you were coming here. Yeah. There's a weird new picture of a the Tarzan movie that's coming out. I didn't even did I know there was a Tarzan movie? I don't know. Out? It's got Al it's I told you, it's got Scars Guard in it. Yeah. I feel like maybe we may have broached this before, but maybe we did. Anyway, the pictures are weird. <laughs> what are the what are they like? It's like he's standing there with his shirt off. I don't know. Yeah, where, well, where, where is. I don't think anyone's gonna complain about it. He that. looks super buff. Yeah. Alexander Skarsgård is a guy from True Blood, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. He was like kind of the like breakout star. Was he was the, but he wasn't the main guy. He was like the well, other main guy. It's like yeah. Was he like was he the Edward or the Jacob? He was the Jacob. Oh, uh, the but Jacob he took the Edward. Ooh, essentially. ooh, you know, like in popularity. Yeah, as um, you do. Yeah, so you know it was. Uh, okay, there we go. This is we're getting to the most exciting news. Is that what's next? Yes. Tell them you guys, about it, Kristen. brace yourselves. If you're standing, sit down for this news. There's going to be a life size too, and Tyra Banks is going to be coming back as Eve. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix, isn't it? Is it? No, I think just Falling Stars. Oh, you mean Wish Upon a Star? Oh, that one too. 
<laughs> no, I, mean, I don't think it is. All, I don't think it kin. is. I think I just made it up. Okay. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, you should try to find it somewhere. It was at a Disney Channel movie with Lindsay Lohan. So I was telling Corey, I, I sent her the link, and I was like, the best thing that can come out of this story next would be if Lindsay Lohan signed on to be in the sequel. Yes. Uh, Which it says in the article she is not doing, but there's still time. I think she could change her. What mind. else are you doing, Lindsay Lohan? I she hasn't been in anything. Yeah. Although I, you know what, I bet it's more like on Prince Disney's Disney. part that they're like, oh, because she turned so correctly. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a great you idea. You know what they need to do is they need to watch Parent Trap, mm, Confessions remember. of a Drama Queen, yes. Teenage Drama Queen, and then Freaky, Freaky Friday. Friday, and then they'll remember mm -hmm. that oh. she was at one time innocent and sweet, wonderful. Yeah. This movie was great, you guys. It's like Tyra Banks is like a Barbie essentially that Lindsay Lohan wishes to life, and is like amazing. Yeah. Becomes oh. her like guru, and it's wonderful. It's so good. Um. And so this is yeah. This is like super. Exciting. And this is like a pit. I know this is like Tyra Banks when she was like a model, not like a weird lifestyle person you yeah. know back in the day apparently the top top google hit for um tyra banks playing even lifestyle is from pakistan today <laughs> <laughs> i had no idea pakistan was no, into no, life size or yeah, you know what, what would we do without you buddy? i know this is our, like he's doing that's what duncan used to do. i don't know where duncan's been lately but now duncan had knee surgery oh that's right he Although he should anymore. be able to watch us, he's just laid up in bed, right? Oh, this <laughs> sorry, is... Duncan. You're probably in a lot of pain. We shouldn't be. We're not mocking you. We just we're think, not mocking you. We, we just, just think miss if, you. We just think if you can't walk around, you should really just come chat with us. Yeah, help us with our tech support and whatnot. Although we've been doing pretty well lately. Yeah, but you're probably gonna have trouble with your sounds. I know. Let's be real. It's true. This new system, though, you guys, I'm pretty excited about it. It's gonna sound cool. I mean, it doesn't sound. It does sound cool. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, and I've got like one of those rigs where it's like it's a cool gold and blue microphone, and it like. It comes from the floor. out. It like. I mean, does it come from out from the from desk? There? Like, yeah. So it oh. comes down, and then I can fold it up, and then bring yeah, it back out. Cool. Well, maybe I should just suspend this from some string. Yeah, just hang it from somewhere. <laughs> uh, it's one named Lance. Really wants to talk to you right now. Lance says today's his birthday. Oh, congratulations, Lance! Happy birthday, Lance! Lance, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Lance! Hey, if anyone has questions that you want to ask Alex Jacob, um, mm -hmm. go ahead and put it in the Q and A section of this uh, and we'll ha we can have it ready for him when he gets in here in a few. Um, and yeah, so we're well, super excited about. Should we talk about some of the things I sent you that you haven't looked at yet? Yes, please, I'm for it. So there's gonna be a movie starring Benedict Cumberbatch where he plays a magician in World War II. A magician? It's pretty much my favorite things in the whole world. Magic, World War II, and Benedict magic? Cumberbatch. I don't think I like, know not this like a real a magic. Like like a like an illusionist magic. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, not like has a wand. Sure, I just didn't so know the this story is that he like did a ma massive illusions to hide like troops and mm. troop movements and weapons and stuff from the German army, so they couldn't see what the Allies are up to. <laughs> And he has this like magic squad that comes together. It's like very preliminary, but I was like, I am so excited about the premise of it. It sounds kind of amazing. It sounds incredible. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It no, I would watch so the heck out of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It would have to turn out to be like a real bummer for me not to see it in the theater. Like that's that is right up my alley. Now that you like phrase it and talk about it, I'm like, no, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm for it. I mean, if you think about it, like I love the prestige. Uh, no, I watch a lot of World War II who didn't love the things. Prestige. You didn't love them? No, who didn't, I said. Oh, I was like, how dare you? Okay, can we really talk about this? Oh, first of all, speaking of World War II, mm -hmm. yesterday, Pearl Harbor Day, for those oh, of you yeah. who didn't know. That's the thing. Day that'll live in infamy. Fun oh. fact, December 7th, mm -hmm. 1941, Pearl Harbor was attacked. Usually, I watch Band of Brothers on two days a year. I had to work all day yesterday and didn't really have time to watch Band of Brothers, but today, I don't know if you probably didn't see this, Producer Bree sent us a message saying that she was talking to her trainer, and her trainer was saying, oh yeah, my friends have been trying to get me to watch Man of Brothers, so I started watching it. So we started episode 10. Mm. <laughs> I was like, but that's the last episode. Wait, they started Well, her 10? friends were already watching it, and they wanted her to watch it, so she just started at episode 10. And it's like physically hurts my mm. soul, because you can't possibly grasp the characters and the 
the like depth of emotion that goes into what they feel and the men who are narrating these episodes like you can't figure that out if you start at the end no and it just hurts me and i feel like i just i just i don't even know this woman but i'm like you're not getting the full breadth of what this series is that's really sad i know it's really troubling to me yeah i'm sorry i'm pretty troubled about it still yep uh anyway I just never mind. Never mind. I just had a weird realization, but it's okay. That's okay. Um, no, that's that's unfortunate. You know, I get uh, we both get protective of Band of Brothers. So as I'm I really said a few weeks ago, if anybody like, tells me they don't like it, I stop. Has anyone ever done that? Has anyone? No, I just made that up. I'm just saying hypothetically. Like yeah, the hypothetical. Although technically, my sister in law didn't really like it, but I think it was more of like a violence thing than a gun thing. I don't think she likes war things. Oh, I guess like, more than if like you, if you dislike than, it as a genre. Yeah, I think it was more of that than yeah. she. Um, like that she took issue with. Thought it was a terrible series. But anyway. Okay, fair enough. Anyway. What else did you send me? Um, I sent you the pictures of the... So it's Margot Robbie, who apparently is like the new It Girl. I guess... Weird. It's weird. So she plays Jane and then Tart Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> I just like yeah, saying Every time you say his name. I know. Yeah. I just feel like it's not even how you say it. He's probably going to call us and be like, <laughs> Ladies, it's not how you say my name. Listen, Alexander It was Skarsgård. supposed to be a Swedish accent, and it was really Kristen bad. needs someone to take her to a movie, so you need to call us up and complain about your name pronunciation. And then you can take me to see your movie. Yeah. Um, and it looks... So apparently the premise of the movie is Jane and Tarzan have gone to live in England, but they send Tarzan back to the Congo as, like, an emissary or something? <laughs> like, to, like, the jungle? Yeah. <laughs> because in the picture, he's wearing khaki pants, and I'm like... Tarzan was a loincloth, and I thought him and Jane stayed in the jungle and lived. This is this is a gentrification story. Is what this is. It's they just... send him back to go like create an arts community, you know, build some lofts, <laughs> arts <laughs> really community. reinvigorate the they economy, would teach the gorillas how to paint. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I don't really know, but he is like super buff in the one picture. Of course, he's like dripping at the rain, and it's like. You know, super buff. Does and he have long a, hair? He does have long hair, which is interesting. Yeah, if you move to England, I, I feel figured. like they would have made him cut it. But then him and Jane have this other picture where he's like sitting behind Jane and she looks like forlorn. And, she, you know, I don't really know what's going on. There was, it's a very strange thing. It seems weird to me. It's weird casting too, because I think like, like to me, Margot Robbie is like, like they're trying to force her on us. Like, I don't feel like anyone <laughs> considers her an it girl except Hollywood. No. And so, like, Cassie, like, is she a draw to things? Like, maybe I'm wrong, but it, I've never heard I anyone go, know. oh, Margot Robbie's in that. I really want to see it. I have no opinion on her. Well, that's my, that's my thing. Oh. It's like, normally you have an opinion on an it girl. Well, there must be some people that do, because she's being in things. But I think it's like Hollywood likes her. So, oh, Brienne says, speaking of Tarzan, <gasps> I, I watched a 1996 movie Brandon with Brendan Fraser. <laughs> she wasn't. She <laughs> I was wasn't, embarrassed to have And he wasn't Tarzan. He was George of the Jungle. That's a good point. I constantly make that enough, mistake. Was there a Tarzan, or was there only the animated Tarzan? What was there like a live action Tarzan? Yeah, in, the, in the old 90s? school one. Oh, oh no, in the nineties. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think so. I think no, so it's just George of the Jungle. George, George, has... George, George of the Jungle, strong as he can be. <laughs> what up, what up, tree? A classic. Oh, that was a great movie. Oh, that had what's his yeah. name? Thomas Hayden Church, right? She Which said the same thing. It's not the same thing, Brie. Mm, it's kind of One the same thing. is George of the Jungle, who's a doofus, and there's Tarzan, who's like manly and not a doofus. I feel like, yeah, for our generation, like George of the Jungle has considerably more significance, probably because of that movie. I mean, like Tarzan, best. obviously, there was the Disney movie, but that, tar- that Disney movie was good. I hate that movie. Oh, the soundtrack alone. The soundtrack is amazing. You guys, I listen to the soundtrack just. Like, come stop your crying, <gasps> it'll be It's so right. good. It's so good. Hold it down. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a, that's a great soundtrack. Shooby doop, 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 doop. I can't do the shooby doops. Da, 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 da. Remember? And on the album version, it was in sync that did it? Yeah, it was. Oh! Trash in the camp. So good. Mm-hmm. That anyway. Was uh, my dad and I used to watch the old school Tarzans from like the 30s and 40s, yeah. you know, when the black and white ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember those. Um, because the guy that played Tarzan was an Olympic swimmer, as he would inform me every time. <laughs> every <laughs> single episode. Every day. Oh, Chad, Kristen. No, Chad, that's what they would do. My, my mom's always like, Chad, get Kristen, talk, uh, uh, whatever your name is. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay yep. thanks, mom. Anyway, we'd be like, Kristen, did you know this guy was an Olympic swimmer? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I remember I didn't yesterday know that when you told me the same story. 
every time we watch this movie. <laughs> Much like any time we watch anything with Danny Kaye, anything. What does he tell you about Danny Kaye? Danny Kaye could not read music. That's like not that interesting a fact. <laughs> because he was only in musicals. Because he was always sure. in musicals. But I feel like most people in musicals can't read music. How do you know? Like, I mean, it just, I mean, from being in musicals when I was growing up and stuff like that, I, like nobody I knew could yeah. read music. I don't know. I feel like cool. he made a living of being in musicals and the guy can read music. You know what? Just take, just accept it as a cool fact for you. I guess. It would be cooler if it was like, Danny Kay was like a, a amazing at reading music and he could like listen to it and just write it down, you know? Then, it, then I'd be impressed. I think it's impressive to be able to listen to music and then be able to play and sing. I think that's impressive. That's, yeah, well, sure. I just, I don't know. It's, it's really what you're Well, fine. Is. I thought that Your was a cool- fun fact is Danny Kay was unfit for his job. I thought it, <laughs> but clearly he wasn't because he was super good at it. Have you ever seen a court jester? I actually have not seen a court jester. Oh my but I gosh. Like Danny Kay. You know what's fun about it? Andrew Lansbury is definitely like 18 years old. It is Does she awesome. look like she's 47 though? No. Well, she, she doesn't is. look 18, but she doesn't look 47. <laughs> Angela Lansbury has just always been old. Yeah. And um, it's got Basil Rathbone in it. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's a good movie. Is Jackson Rathbone related to Basil Rathbone? I don't know. I feel like maybe I might have read that somewhere. That would but be cool. it also maybe is just a thing my brain made. It could be also that as uh, well. But he played, who played Hans Christian Andersen? Danny Kaye did. Oh. <laughs> Imposter. <laughs> Danny Kaye is a magical human. I like him a lot. Man. So you don't like my fact, but I thought it was cool. And Tom so, obviously thinks it's cool because he yeah. tells it to me constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently very also, important. Also, should though. probably get his memory checked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, like, what is it about dads in general that it's like, like, it's like you don't have Alzheimer's. Why is it that you tell me the same story? 18 every times. Day? I don't, I don't know what it is. But then again, everybody listening to this is probably like, you guys tell the same stories like constantly. You guys already talked about Chris <laughs> Pine being in Gal and being in Wonder Woman. <laughs> and we know! We talked about Diddy K, I remember because did I Did I already asked, share this fact? No, no, no. It was well, I mean, maybe you did that. Maybe you maybe I didn't, you also hated on it then. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't remember being as vehemently against it at the time. No, uh, I remember because then I told you to ask your dad if he had seen a star is born. And oh, that's right, and he like did. 30 he seconds had, later, yes. and he was like, yeah, with blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, he had, like, right. a fact he, about he it. He did say that. Immediately. He does. Like, he he definitely didn't IMDb Here's it. the thing about my dad. My dad has a fact about everything. <laughs> and if he doesn't, he just makes one up. Yeah, and I believe it, because he says it with authority, and he has a fact about everything else. Mm -hmm. For my entire childhood growing up, he made me believe that there... Okay, so we used to okay. sing this Daniel Boone song. <laughs> Daniel Boone was a man, just a big man. And then he told me that the song said, with eyes like an eagle and a nose like an eagle had he. What does it actually say? I don't know, but those are, apparently aren't the words. <laughs> and my mom claims that whenever my dad would sing it, she'd be like, that isn't the word to the song. And me and my brother were like, of course it is. Dad would never lie. <laughs> but our entire childhood, he misled us. I and mean, he made us think that this was how the song went. No, I mean, because that sounds legit. Like he didn't, It totally like, sounds legit thing. because Daniel yeah. Boone was a mountain man, so clearly he would have to have eyes like an eagle and nose like a beagle. Yeah, that's like like when my mom messed up lyrics, it was always like entirely nonsensical. Yeah. Like, you know, it just didn't make, like, you should have, you should hear my mom sing literally any Stone Temple Pilots song, Rest in Peace, Scott Weiland. She will butcher it in like the most ridiculous ways. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just a fact of life. So that your dad actually made sense with him. Yeah. I'm actually pretty Well, and it, obviously, because we believed him for, I mean, this was not a joke. I mean, this is probably like maybe a year ago that this massive lie has come about. Oh, man. So Who can we trust, even? I know, you can't even you trust. Can you, trust? <laughs> you can't trust your dad to teach you lyrics to a song from- You know, really, parents are like the last Back person the you should trust. They tell you things like Santa Claus exists, and like, mm -hmm. you know, the, it, just for like convenience, they'll lie to you so that you don't do something like, you so, know, if you lie, you your should, nose grows. The crust of your bread is healthy. Carrots help your eyes. Yeah. I think, isn't that true? Is that not true? I don't think they really help them. Like, it? probably not enough for It's feel, definitely like, not like in that them. episode of Gilligan's Island when Marianne ate those radioactive carrots and could see ships from far, far away. And well, have you ever eaten sick. radioactive carrots? How do you know that's yeah. not how it works? Because I think radioactive carrots just give you cancer. Oh. Yeah, that's probably true. Accurate. That was a downer. What else did you send me? 
Um, I sent you one more thing. And I, can, <laughs> I, I know there was at least three. I was driving and there was just constant. Constant of me being. Yeah. Oh, um, the girl from the Blade Girl from Kingsman is going to be in a reboot of The Mummy. A reboot? Oh, of just them. listen. Okay. Listen. Okay. First of all, you haven't seen the first Mummy, so you don't get to make any judgment calls. Accurate. Accurate. Second. This is the deal that they're making. Alex Kurtzman is writing Alex, it? Alex, sure. Okay. Or he wrote this article. I don't know who Alex Kurtzman Alex is. Alex Kurtzman's the guy who wrote um, Star Trek. Oh. And, oh. Like the reboot. Oh. And, okay. Well, anyway, so she's going to play the mummy-ish character. Okay. Okay. But apparently what they want to do is make a kind of monster universe similar to the superhero universe where their movies kind of coincide. So like that Frankenstein. Makes sense, that's like a thing Universal. A mummy. Yes. Yeah. Um, like a, Van, a Van Helsing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which Van Helsing, I just giggle because it always makes me think of um, forgetting Sarah Marshall when he has the puppet show about Van Helsing. <laughs> Van I only vaguely remember that, but yeah. I trust that it happened. Also, this one here, another funny, funny story about Van I Helsing. Do. Yeah. So my dad really likes the movie with Hugh Jackman, even though it's so long and so boring. He really wanted to watch it one night. So we were like, me and my mom, we were going to go rent it. This is back in the day. They didn't have, we bought it. We, or he went, no, he went and bought it because he wanted to add it to his collection. Comes back and I, I'm looking at the DVD and like, in the back of the, <laughs> the back of the things that it was like 20 minutes long or 30 minutes. And I'm like, it's a weird movie. It's not very long. <laughs> we put it in. He bought the like, animated cartoon like companion no and he was pissed <laughs> me and my mom are like dying laughing we think it's the funniest thing in the whole world and he is like more just like so mad so we ended up going and getting regular van helsing for him and then we watched it and i was like this movie was long we should just watch the cartoon version it's so we never long. watched the cartoon version I don't remember if we ended up watching it. I'm or sure he watched it at some point. Probably we imagine. Oh no, we because we opened it to put it in. Oh, and then I was like, "This doesn't look right. It looks really short." And then <laughs> this we, looks cartoony. And then it turned. And then we started watching it, and then we realized it was. What did the cover look like? It honestly, the cover because it's so the, there was so much CGI in the movie. You're like, yeah. Oh, it's it's and it, I, I'm pretty sure it was Van Helsing from behind, so you couldn't even really tell it. <laughs> like, I'm trying to remember even, but the cover looks. It doesn't look super like a cartoon, you know? Okay. Anyway. I'll accept it. It was funny. <laughs> we still make fun of him about it. Every time we buy something, we're like, well, it's not the cartoon version, is it? <laughs> and, he was, and he's just like stares at us. <laughs> and we're like, whatever, Pop, you didn't even teach us the right words to Daniel Boone. How embarrassing. I've been yeah. singing it wrong my entire life. This is your comeuppance for misleading. <sighs> there you go. Yeah. Um, let's see here. What else can we talk about while we wait? Oh, Melanie says the soundtrack to Disney's Tarzan is one of my all time favorite movie soundtracks. Uh, word. And also, she <gasps> said, Sorry, keep hearing it. Okay, she said she missed the first few minutes of the cast, so did we put chicken salt on our fries? Yes. Yes, we did. We put chicken salt on them, determined they taste a little like Lowry's seasoning salt. Not bad. What is happening, Kristen? <sighs> Oh my goodness. Producer Bree is coming through. Oh my gosh. Jackson Rathbone is distantly related to Basil Rathbone and Stonewall Jackson. What? What kind of lineage is that? <laughs> also, he has a tattoo of a ketchup bottle. So, fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Just as old Stonewall would have. <laughs> no, Stonewall would have had lemons, obviously. <laughs> obviously. And a cross and a picture of Jesus. Truly. Because he was very religious. Um, and he used to soak on lemons before going into... Oh, question for Alex Jacob. Yes. Uh, which tweeted description of your performance on Jeopardy are you least uncomfortable with and why? Nerd God or certifiable <laughs> sociopath? That is a very good question. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. We look forward to you. Through. Unless he never that. shows up. Hopefully. Unless he never shows up. So we'll just sit here. It's, it's already possible. Too, but we could just drink this whole we'll bottle of wine. just drink a bottle of wine. And... Uh, oh, you know what I can talk about? I didn't get to talk about last week. Okay. Yeah, do it. Corey's like taking a back seat. I'm like, let me just ramble. No, about this all these things. No one cares about. I'm for it. I'm not you guys. Asleep, so. so here's the thing, right? Netflix. Sometimes you like go down the rabbit hole. I'm sitting there the other night. You know what to watch? You know, sometimes it, you just finally pick something that always keeps showing up as something mm -hmm. you should watch. So it kept showing up that you should. I should watch the 100 because I watched all CW shows. Yeah, because you've much. watched every other thing. That's Basically, the lateral family keeps the CW in business. I also watch, I mean, between my family, we watch Originals, Vampire Diaries, Arrow, Flash, iZombie. Do you watch the Originals? No, my, oh, my, other, my brother oh. and my, and my brother loved Hellcats when that was on. Oh, wow. With What's-Her-Face from High School Musical? Yeah. Ashley Tisdale? 
Yes. Yeah. And like Ali. And Ali Michalka. Michalka. And the guy, and, and Psycho Derek from One Tree Hill, and. Psycho Derek oh, oh my God, what happened? What was that? Something just clinked in my earphones. Did you hear that? No. Are your earphones even plugged in, BTW? <laughs> <laughs> so Kristen is imagining <laughs> things that are happening in the earphones that are not plugged Wait, in. I didn't even get to talk about the thing that I wanted to say. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so where did that noise come from? Your mind. Okay. Anyway, you guys, so I've been watching. Oh, wait. Oh, has he been here this whole time? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex. You guys are on such a roll. <laughs> he didn't want to interrupt. Was so I, was, I, was, I was about to say something when my name came up, but uh, you guys went to the next topic so fast. That... Oh, my. Yeah, we do that a lot. <laughs> so sorry so to sorry. accidentally ignore you. <laughs> no. It's hey, do you been, uh, just been sitting here enjoying the show. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Wonderful. Hey, do you have a do you have a camera on whatever device you're using? Uh, let's just say I don't. <laughs> okay, we're doing this like Martin Martin <laughs> McCann. Oh, it's Martin McCann style. Martin McCanning it. This it'll be interesting that we we can't see you. We just have we to We can't see what faces you're making at us. Yeah. Um, Kristen, can you wait on your Yeah, it's okay. On your story, okay. There you go. No, it's honestly it's not a very good story, so we should just go because we do have some <laughs> questions for you. Yeah, please. someone thinks we're from my garage, which is ridiculous. Keo, not someone. Keo, yeah, saying. we're not. So, hi, Alex. How are you doing? Wait, before I move on, I have one fact. Yeah. Did you guys know that there are actually two Olympic swimmers who were Tarzan? I did not. <laughs> no, tell us about it. Oh, well, the, like the one everybody knows is Johnny Weissmuller, but then there was another dude named Buster Crab, who was oh, also an Olympic gold medalist who also played Tarzan. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's, Maybe that's, that was that's, a prerequisite for playing Tarzan. Yeah. Like, like, gold were you an Olympic swimmer? Well, think about it. Like the body is like shaped. True. With those broad swimmer. shoulders and the little waist. Yeah. Just like that awkward triangle. Mm -hmm. And the big hands. And the hands. Yep. And flippers. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. That's a good fact. fact. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my fun fact of the night. Did you like my fact about Danny K? <laughs> was he, were you here when we were talking Danny K? How long have you been here? How long have you yeah, been no, here for? Yeah, I was. Um, I caught the part of the Danny K. So, what was the fact about Danny K? Though it's I heard not a good fact. It's a cool fact. Okay, tell him. He tell him. He we'll couldn't read Alex music. Of that. Danny K couldn't read music. Oh, okay. But he was cool. in a bunch of musicals. No, I know. I, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> You, I mean, it's not cool. you don't have to pretend that's He's a cool just fact. being polite. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to drink in the corner of the dark. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you're, uh, so we have here the voice, the disembodied voice that you're hearing, the voice of Alex Jacob, who you may recognize from uh, his previous career as a poker star and now Jeopardy Tournament of Champions champion. Hmm, that's uh, redundant. So, that's the official title. Is that actually the end? I feel like <laughs> no, I don't. supposed to be winner. It should be like, <laughs> it should be like a champion's like wizard. Like, yeah, like, like master. Grandmaster. Or or what do they call the guy? I almost not, said Grand Dragon. That would have been. And I'm not saying that I'm not endorsing the KKK, but what's well, that's, the, yeah, Grand Dragon. <laughs> that's what it's called. We are not that. That's, yeah. We don't endorse that, obviously, but that's. This is, a, this is an anti KKK show. Yeah, it is, it yeah. Is. We, we all officially disendorse. We disendorse them. The KKK. We disavow them, much like the IMF happens. <laughs> exactly. If you um, so, Alex is coming Alex. from trivia right now. How'd you do? Did you win? Uh, we lost. Oh. Oh, tough outing. We were coming off three in a row, actually. Okay. Um, we only had. Uh, we had a three-person team tonight. We were a little shorthanded. What was your team name, more importantly? That's important. We always are the shitty Beatles. <laughs> shitty Beatles. Well, oh, that's from um, Beatles, like a Beatles, like, like the Beatles band, like or the, Beatles, like the, the bug. Um, it is a line from a movie. Yeah, which, it is. Uh, it is from it. it is from Wayne's World. Wayne's World. That's what it was. That's like it's mm. it's a line from something. I know this. Uh, this is why you were on Jeopardy and not me. Now. Where do you do this? Like, is this like a local bar and you're with like your homies? What what kind of trivia? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The video. Sorry, what? Bree's just saying if we, because we can't see him if he just wants Oh, to got it. <laughs> sorry. We're sorry. getting notes. Uh, we're I, getting notes from our producer. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared for a, uh, I didn't it's okay. it was a video type uh, thing. <laughs> 
That's okay. Yeah, you the know, last. You don't want to see my apartment here. It's a mess. <laughs> uh, where you went? Oh, so your trivia. So your um, trivia is where? At your house? At a bar? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Just gonna bar them all over the city. Yeah. And so, okay, so you came from doing like your poker thing, and then uh, I know in one Were of you your playing poker before tonight, also, and then you went to trivia. No, 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 no. This life. is like I mean, like historically <laughs> in oh. the history of Alex Jacob. History of his life. Did you read his? Uh, in the annals of did, time. Did yes. they make a, a, a an authorized biography on life? <laughs> It was yeah, really boring. That was like, and then he was cool, and then he was poker winner, and then he went on this Jeopardy show, and he was yeah. actually nice, like the Full House story. Do you yeah. ever watch those, Alex? Like unauthorized, the unauthorized uh, lifetime. Uh, you know, my wife will have it on in the background. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll um, see him every once in a while. I, I, I probably don't you know, seek him out myself. Yeah, the true life, uh, true Hollywood stories type thing. You're asking. Right, like uh, the unauthorized Saved by the yeah. Bell story or the Full right. House. Yeah, I think I actually saw a part of that exact one, the Saved by the Bell uh, story. That's it. It was an instant yeah. classic. Did you guys catch that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was instant. Absolutely. Um, but, okay, so uh, what was I actually leading up to with this? You Until used to you play poker, poker and now poker. you do other things. Game show contested. God damn it. Alex, <laughs> it's been a long night. It's been a long night here. Uh, so we're a little... Where are we talking? I can't... I, 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 I can explain the shitty Beatles line. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> explain the shitty Beatles. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the movie, uh, like Wayne's asking, you know, what band is that? Like the shitty Beatles. Or are they any good? No, they suck. <laughs> so, so it's not just a clever name. That's right. So okay. That's, that's what it's from. That's oh, because Beatles eat. <laughs> no. I think you're overthinking is it. Is that like a dung beetle? Is that no, the just like. It they're might like, be they're the called. Part? They're called the shitty Beatles. Like, are they any good? No, they suck. Oh, okay, so it's not just a clever name. Like, they just suck. But why? Why would it be clever? If... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Because if they weren't, if they were actually good, but they called themselves. Yeah, that'd be like funny. Oh, like, like a, oh, like, oh, like, like they're the good like Beatles. They're good. Yeah, like they're good. Okay. They're... I guess they just should have just watched the movie and then I guess. Have you never seen Wayne's World? No, dude. I'm. Oh wow. This is. Thank you for bringing up this. I, I actually inherited the name. Um, I kind of joined a team that already had the name. Uh, in my defense. So, do they know who you are? Do you use really <laughs> <laughs> Do they know who you are? <laughs> do they know you're kind of a big deal? <laughs> do they know that you won Jeopardy? Or were you just like came in, were like, eh, I think I might try this thing out. And you're like, don't worry, I know everything. <laughs> uh, do they? Yes, they are my friends in real life. Oh, they know okay. who I am. <laughs> they know that I've been on Jeopardy. At this point. Oh, okay. okay. Fair enough. I, I was playing with them before I was on Jeopardy, so I guess they, they knew me before I was. Oh. That's where my question was going before the Lifetime movie interjection. <laughs> uh, was, so you said in one of your uh, contestant bio things that like when you were a kid, you wanted to be a contestant on a game show. <laughs> and so my thought was like, was it always like Jeopardy? Like you, you got to a point where you're like, this is, I'm super good at trivia. Or were you doing bar trivia and you were like, hey, I'm kind of good at this. I should do Jeopardy. Um, yeah, I guess I'm, like trivia has always been like a big, uh, you know, kind of my hobby or like, you know, love uh, board games and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it was like maybe five, six years ago. I was, you know, I always used to watch with my mom and stuff um, as a kid growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of maybe it was um, partly because I had watched poker on TV and then was kind of like, well, maybe I could do this someday. And then I was able to that done so maybe that was kind of along the same lines i was thinking i don't know give it a shot and see if i can do this how old were you when you were doing the poker circuit uh about uh you know 21 to 28 29 oh wow that's a good long time to be in that I yeah mean, yeah i had a, a good uh, run I, you know, <laughs> I, I can't complain i had a good run um i kind of got a little you know somewhat burnt out by it, it was kind of yeah. Looking to, do, uh, looking to do something else. Yeah. So, so you're like, I think I'm going to move on to Jeopardy. That seems like a <laughs> logical step after being a <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, that was just kind of something like, you know, for fun. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. All we're saying is you're living your best life. Yeah. That's a, you're, you're living the dream True. at this point. Um, well, the, other, uh, the other day I uh, joined in on one of your little trivia um, competitions. So what? Yeah, was, thanks for coming out. 
Yeah, it was super fun. You've got a great group of people following you um, who join in yeah. on this. And it seems like it's creating a community. Was that the goal was just like, hey, let's all hang out? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't. Uh, it's just kind of something I've started last week, just kind of trying it out. Um, kind of host, just hosting a pretty simple. Wrote like a twenty question game, and just um, people uh, from from Twitter, some of my followers from Twitter, came out to a chat room and and played it. Uh, mm -hmm. We've done it a couple times now. I'm sorry, can you pull up my roommate. What's that? what do you say? <laughs> I always you about this situation. Do you want to come talk to her? Oh yeah, this this, this seems Sorry. more seems more interesting than what I'm talking about already. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, you've got a question from within the apartment. <laughs> within oh. the apartment has a question. This is a first oh, on the fan cave. Your roommates are very upset with me. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. This, this, is, is, wait. Un, this is unprecedented? This it is says, unprecedented. Are you kidding me? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, <laughs> question mark, exclamation point. I know who he is. I know. What <laughs> I don't know is how to live tweet someone. <laughs> Ask him what he thought. <laughs> this is a wait, good what? question. This is good. I'm sorry. I just think this is really funny. Um, Ask him what he thought about Matt and if he was annoyed by how much Alex liked Matt. Yes, serial killer Matt, if you will. Interesting. Yeah. I wasn't, um, you know, uh, I, I tweeted something to this effect um, that uh, I kind of wanted to hate hate Matt, you yeah. know, um, when it was all said and done, he, you know, he was kind of just such a nice kid that you couldn't really, um, couldn't really dislike him. Um, Does he get you know, he was a little, you know, awkward, you know, a little socially awkward, like you'd expect, but... Sure. Uh, like you, you expect know. from someone who is on Jeopardy? Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, like like all, like you expect from all of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much everyone. Everyone. Uh, there's no one there. Who's, well, maybe a couple people who are uh, pretty pretty Super normal guys. Swamp. But yeah, like uh, an Andrew Herringer or a Dan Fights out. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, most of us have you know our, our quirks or whatever. Um, you know, to his credit, um, after I played. The first round, he came up to me and was like, "You know, wow, that was a really impressive performance." And I, nice. I was kind of, kind of took, I was kind of taken aback that he would, kind of, while the tournament was still going on, he would kind of approach me like that. Um, yeah, yeah he, he just, you know, he, he seemed like a well-meaning kid. You know, um, I, you know, it's not necessarily my style to like, you know, celebrate um, the way he did in some of the game, you know, sure. like whatever, you know, some of the stuff he did, like when he played, it's not necessarily like what I would do, but he's young. And like, if that's, you know, what he felt or whatever, you know? Yeah. Well, you were almost on the, on the uh, other end of the spectrum. The thing that you were often criticized for was seeing right. like an aloof slacker guy. <laughs> so were right. you internally celebrating? Like you were internally fist pumping like uh, Matt, or are you just sort of taking in stride? Um, I, I guess I was just, yeah. Uh, not celebrating so much in the moment, you know, I mean, I was mm -hmm. celebrating after it was all over, I guess, you know, I was kind of super focused the whole time and not really like, you know, right. I guess maybe also just from poker, like you don't want to celebrate too early. You know, like, ah, you know. Poker face, poker oh, face. Poker face. There's a reason that's a thing. Ah, I didn't even think about that. Did you wear sunglasses when you played poker? <laughs> No, no, I didn't. Mm. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't wear it. He did have a big fro. I think that would throw people off, personally. My did you hide? Did you hide things in it and have things like crawl out until they'd be like, "Ah, oh, what is that?" And you're like, "Don't worry, it's just my friend Frankie. He's a mouse." Yeah, yeah. I wish I had the uh, a good story, uh, something like that. You know, it's just like a fun thing, like. Uh, you know, people every once in a while I get someone to be like, "Oh, but with my friend, like, is your hair real or are you wearing a wig?" You know, no, it's, it's that it's is real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really weird. We've got another question from right here. You want to ask it into the mic? No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Asking questions, try to quiz them. Like in the oh, life. like just in general. Ooh, yes, people. Do people just try and like stump you in life? Like, do people come up to you and be like, "Oh, you're that guy from Jeopardy." Hey, what's the capital what's of Burkina right. Faso? Right. Uh, not so much. Uh, one time at, at my wedding, there was uh, one family friend who took particular delight in the uh, and tried to stunt me. But um, yeah, you're like, bro. You know, the people, 
you know, I don't really get like rec- you know recognized on the street every day or anything like that. It's, I'm not really like uh, you know anywhere near that kind of celebrity or something. So no, there aren't there, you know there aren't like people like quizzing me like you know just randomly. Yeah, see, I always, I would expect that to be the case. But see, then my question, you know, you're doing sort of your your trivia thing. You've got a good Twitter following, and you're really interactive with people, and you live tweet Jeopardy. So are you, do you want to be the next Ken Jennings, or is this just for fun? Like, do you want to be household name Alex Jacob, or are you just kind of kicking it? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I don't really, you know, I don't really think it's possible to be the next Ken Jennings. Or like, your Arthur Chu, you know, writing all his sure. articles, winning sure. over the universe. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, if, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, sure, if, you know, if, you know, if it's, if the opportunities were to fall in my lap where I could make money at like Arthur Chu or Ken Jennings or, or however, the, you know, yeah. sure. I, I guess it's not really, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's, it, that's it seems hard to it seems hard to pull off, but you never know. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Yeah, now, one of the things, and already we've got a question based on this on here um, uh, <laughs> that I learned in the quick time that I spent doing your trivia thing, and just one night doing this, that Lost and Frasier are things that you are super <laughs> into. Um, I'm what I like to call a Damon Lindelof apologist. I think everything he makes is gold, and everyone hates me for that. To, I just need to know before we get to this other question. In sum total, with Lost, do you finish out satisfied or do you hate the ending? Oh, I was okay with it. I was, you know, um, I, I always kind of just felt like that there was never really, it was never really going to be possible that they were going to, like, you know, solve everything, solve everything. Yeah, uh, sure. find up all the loose ends. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't. I wouldn't put myself in the class of like obsessives who were, you know, um, you know, super into it. So they were, I guess I was just more of a cat. You know, I was able to say, you know, Lost was a good show and whatever. The ending didn't answer anything, but you mm-hmm. know, whatever. I enjoyed those first however many seasons, and I, you know, I was kind of put it to bed. I guess I'm not really a super fan in that way. I don't. know, Maybe most people would. We're not happy with it. I'm, I'm, I'm gathering. Oh, well, you know, there's a lot of people who criticize that, and ever since then, Damon Lindelof has kind of suffered under the curse of people not liking the way he does things. I think just because they were so upset with the end of it. But whatever. I liked Prometheus. I like um, what he. I think he did a good job with World War Z at the end of it, fixing it. So, so you're that's saying my two cents. You were okay with Lost then? I was okay with Lost. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. But Fraser is the other thing um, that you're apparently into. Why Frasier? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, Frasier's just a solid show. I mean, uh, I don't, this is kind of just random that I happen to recommend Frasier and now it's being brought up on this podcast. And now, <laughs> I know, like this is like people <laughs> want to know. People want to know. Yeah, two maybe, questions about Frasier. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I'm associated with, with Frasier. I mean, yeah, you've all probably, of a sudden become their biggest spokesperson, yeah. Alex, so you better. You've made your bed, Alex. Now defend lying in it. No, or just I, I don't know how it just, I, I don't know how it came up. It came up in the chat the other day and, um, you know, I just always, it was just, uh, a couple of years ago, I went through and watched them all again. You know, I guess I watched I watched some of them when it was on when I was a kid. But it kind of it kind of always felt like you know when we were kids, like it was like one of those shows that like wasn't cool. Like 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 Friends it's was kind like of a cool. middle-aged guy friend. Yeah, like Friends yeah, was like cool, but like Frasier was like not like over our heads back then. But like yeah. I went back a while. It, it it holds up, you know. It's uh it's. It's kind of just like that comfort food sitcom, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of, uh, you know, you learn all the characters and uh, just kind of that soothing, kind of good to watch before bed. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Because it puts you to sleep? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, like not in a, not in a bad, not, not in a bad not way. Not in a boring it's just way? In a, it's, it's just in a calming, I don't know, it's just like a calming presence, like a warm blanket around you. Okay. I feel okay. like, like just Kelsey Grammer's voice in general has an effect. I am. Um, I saw him on Broadway last year, and Plus I found his dog. voice very soothing the whole time. So, so what right. is right. your favorite episode? Yeah. So of this is a Frasier. question from Shay Zellweger. It says, "What is your favorite episode of Frasier, and why?" 
Oh, uh, that's hard because it was on a long time. <laughs> wasn't it? How many seasons? Yeah. Is it? Or just pick 11, one you really like. One eleven. One eleven seasons. Um, seasons. Yeah, there, there was an episode I remember. Where they were like, ah, they're like carrying around a bag of flour for some reason. It's like representing a. A baby? baby, yeah. Oh, we had to do that in eighth grade, but yeah, they were adults. Like, yeah, uh, they did it as adults. It just can't be your favorite episode. You don't well, even know what the premise is. Well, it's, I tried to explain to you that I'm not <laughs> like actually a Frasier super fan. Like it's just kind of <laughs> like this. Uh, <laughs> you are disappointing all of these people. I hope you know. No, I mean. Like I said, like I went through and watched them all a couple of years ago. It's a good show. It's not, you know, I'm not, um, it's not going to be on my gravestone or anything. <laughs> Alex <laughs> Jacob, <laughs> Alex Jacob, Terminator, Terminator. I can't even say that word right. Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey Terminator Champions, just Terminator Frasier. Champions, Grand Dragon, <laughs> and Fraser Binge Watcher. <laughs> um, this is before we get to dog phobia's question. Then I do want to ask. Like, are you a super fan of any TV shows? <laughs> um, Other than Jeopardy, of course. <laughs> right. I was thinking that. Uh, am I a super fan? I mean, it's no. I mean, no. Am I a okay. super fan of anything? Because, uh, well, I just feel like today, like, super fan is such a. Right. Like people who are actually super fans are like so. Uh, it's there's so much packed in that word. I feel right. like I, you're not I, writing fanfic and things okay. Like well, how about that. this? Right, like, Do you okay, have a so like, show that you actually so have like, a favorite episode that you could describe to us? The plot <laughs> of? That's a good. That's wow, a good. Getting, getting a, little, a little pointed now. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a dime in the sash jar right there. Um, oh, we need to use that phrase. That's I'm ancestral? D diamond in the sass jar. Oh. <laughs> a diamond in the sass jar? That is. We should get a sass jar and put dimes in it. Um, so, like, Favorite I guess I, I like, like, reality TV, like, uh, like Survivor, Big Brother, oh, and those Survivor. shows. Survivor. I was, uh, you know, I haven't, um, what about I wouldn't, Amazing I wouldn't Race? say it was super, yeah, I watched that too. I mean. Not as much as the as the other two, but I like that. Okay, like I wouldn't say I'm a super fan of any of them because I've missed some seasons and stuff. But I try to watch it. Um, I do like I do like the uh, competition aspect. Um, uh, okay. Big, Big Brother was really exciting this past season because um, a poker player I I knew was uh, was on there and did really well. Oh, that's fun! I don't yeah. even know, like. What is like so Big Brother? There's a game to it. Like all I know is they're in a house and you can see them all the time. Yeah, it's it, yeah, the Big bathroom? Brother. It's basically it's it's uh it's similar to Survivor. Oh, so okay. they have like they tasks have, like, or challenges. Yeah, challenges. they have yeah they have challenges and votes and stuff. Oh, okay. Votes. Oh, votes. Yeah. I'm like I I don't think I watch well unless you count cooking shows. I don't watch any like Master TV. Chef Junior. Yeah, Master Chef Junior. Did I'm you like, see the commercial for the next one where the little girls? He's like, she's like, it's secret, and he and Gordon Ramsay's like, what is it? And she's like, it's a secret. He's like, really? She's like, yeah. And he's like, oh, like, Rrr. I'm like, oh my god, so ill. <laughs> I think you probably had to be there. You should so, watch. It. What's, so what's your uh, cooking show of choice then? Me? You know, yeah, you go know, Top Chef or you go anything like with Bobby Flay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kind of like so, worst okay. cooks in America, or beat Bobby Flay. Like throw down. Is that throw saying? down with Bobby Flay. Yeah, yeah, any of those kinds of things. I don't know. I have, I have a thing for that leprechaun named Ben, so I watch any of those. But also Master Chef. Um, all of Does that. It seems like he always loses the throw down. I haven't I seen many like episodes. 50. 50. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen too many, but it feels like he always loses. He only watches the other fifty. Yeah, that's, you're missing that. Yeah. You're missing the um, winning fifty. And yeah. so to return again to, for one last moment to Fraser, dog phobia wants to know who introduced you to it. And two people liked it. Well, so apparently, that's a good was question. A was that a dog breathing? <laughs> that is what I heard. Also, I don't know. It might have been just something scratching. Oh. Um. Who introduced me to it? Uh, you know, I n n it was just always around. I don't know. I was just always aware of it. And right. I guess one day I, I don't I don't I don't remember someone saying you should check. I don't. I think I just decided like hey, maybe maybe this was good. I guess Netflix. You know, shows come on Netflix. Yeah. And you're like, all right, well, maybe I'll check check this out. See if it holds up. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, stuff like that has sort of always been there. 
you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, ooh, we have more questions. Okay, so uh, from Keo, uh, which tweeted description of your performance on Jeopardy, Jeopardy are you least comfortable with and why? Nerd God or certifiable sociopath? Wow. That's a good kinda, question. That one seems kind of mean. Well, and you, Alex, you're amongst those people who retweeted a lot of mean things about yourself, didn't you, on Twitter? Sure. Um, what, so what am I least comfortable with? Yes. Uh, the celebratory nerd guy. Well, it said, least, the, it said that, least uncomfortable with. Least, no, I think least, least, no, least comfortable with. That's not yeah. what it said. Just leave it that way. Okay. It's the same question. Uh, <laughs> is it okay if I'm equally, uh, can I be equally fine with both? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, least comfortable. You can do whatever you want. Well, your monikers. I, I guess I kind of, uh, it's just all kind of like rolls off my back, you know, whenever, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wh whatever people say, whether it's good or bad. I, I guess good things are good, you know, I guess, <laughs> I, I guess, I guess I can appreciate good. Things. Sometimes when people say negative things, you can actually enjoy it more because it's funnier. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> when so people, nothing. When people are just straightforwardly nice, you know, yeah. it's nice, but it's not funny. Right, right. That makes sense. And and so that actually, uh, my question is, what did you think of sort of the uproar about Laura a week or two ago? Oh, I, oh, I, I mean, I uh, I thought it was a it was overblown for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I you know, admit it. You know, I, I, watching it myself too. It's you know, it's definitely distracting. Yeah. You know, do you think it was a strategy? Annoying. Yeah. Because people, no. you don't think it was a strategy. You think that's no. the way she says it? Okay. No. Well, I don't know. You know, like it may have been like a nerves thing or like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't know if that's how she says the words hundred yeah. thousand in her everyday life or whatever. It may have <laughs> just been like, you know, kind of a surreal situation. It may have just been like her nerves taking over. Yeah. Right, right. I'm sure people have a lot of weird ticks that they wouldn't normally do and things, but it was one of the things that I had heard as a as a thought about it because she's a lawyer. Was you know, and and for those who don't who don't watch Jeopardy regularly, don't know who Laura is. Um, she had a habit of saying like uh, for a thousand or a hundred when she would uh, talk, and it was really annoying the people of Twitter. Um, but everything so, annoys like, the people I, of Twitter. It's true. Everything does annoy the people of Twitter, but people put forth that it's like it could have been a strategy to throw people off because her competitors did really seem like they were like having trouble. But that may have just been because of those competitors being. No, uh, well, yeah, I think that's pretty silly. I doubt she would do that. I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's 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 like a little annoying how like uh, how that's such so much the focus of uh, of, of Jeopardy recently. Uh, like, like the characteristics of the right, right, like everyone latches on to that, or you know, it's just I feel bad. Like, uh, she seemed like she was taking it in stride, and yeah. she seemed like she was taking it okay, but I feel bad, but it's just like reading comment after comment, yeah, it's like saying the same thing, right? Yeah, it's well, it's interesting because you know, I mean, I've been live tweeting Jeopardy for like five years now, and nobody else seemed to be doing it, and all of a sudden, in the past like year or so, <laughs> because. Like you're the youngest months. person that watches. I, well, that's actually, what I thought. <laughs> but all of a sudden, it seems like everybody's like right? there's a huge group of people tweeting it's about a youth this. explosion. Yeah, I don't well, know where I, that came from. Yeah, well, I don't. I mean, uh, every, it's funny. Everyone says like, oh, like the like the audience for Jeopardy is like geriatric, and like it's yeah. all the commercials are like pain relievers yeah. and stuff like that, and life insurance. But um, I don't know. Like, like my followers seem pretty young. Like I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Like like teenagers even like a lot of them so like yeah. I don't know like there are young people watching Jeopardy so that's um that's the good news I don't know with the with the Laura thing maybe it wasn't so much like seeing everybody tweet about it but I thought it was weird like that like mainstream media has to like pick up on it and like write think pieces or whatever you know oh gosh whatever. that you know, is, that's another thing I have noticed is seeing like things from Jeopardy trending on Facebook yeah like all of a sudden like there's a BuzzFeed piece on Laura and there's a Huffington Post wow. piece and like, you know. That's crazy. I didn't realize that was the yeah. case. You're right. So I don't know. For it's a strange 15 minutes. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's one thing for individual people to tweet whatever they want, but then when like media feels like this is a legitimate story to report yeah. on, when it's just like people on the internet were annoyed by someone on Jeopardy. <laughs> 
like they consider that like a legitimate news story like so it's, yeah that's strange. when you put it that way that seems mean really <laughs> it's like, yeah it's a strange times yeah um we have let's see so uh <laughs> Gosh, I'm not asking that. Well, someone it said, please sing the Frasier theme song. Does it even? <laughs> well, can you sing the Frasier theme song? Hey, we made Brad Rudder do rap. So and we made him sing us sing us something. That, what was it? Doing the alphabet Fresh backwards? Prince of Bel Air. Oh, and the alphabet. No, no, no. It, oh, I'm thinking of when he tried to do a Sean Connery impression. Yeah, that was bad. Not Sean Connery. Christopher Walken. Yeah. Okay, can you sing the Frasier theme song? <sighs> oh boy. Yes, do it. No, I don't, I, it's, it, it goes something like... Uh, Scrambled eggs or something. Right, right. right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so, baby, I hear the blues are calling tossed salads and scrambled eggs. Hey! It's basically something like that. Oh, and then that it, I, think I, keep, I think it keeps going. Something okay. like... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's, like, it's something like that. I know you sound no. confused, but baby, I got you pegged. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what to do with those tossed salads and scrambled eggs. And call it again. Doom, doom. There you go. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Hey. Oh, thank hey. you for doing that. I appreciate it. Fraser has remember. left the building. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> moving on. Okay, we'll we'll get to that one. Katie left. When, is she gonna come back? I don't know. She um, so, uh, somewhat holy wants to know how do you do your hair? Ooh, you do have pretty resplendent hair. And as a, a curly haired fro person, I'm curious as well. Do you use product? How does it work? Um, he's like, I wake up. <laughs> um, outside. I, I guess when I appeared on the show, yeah, I had a little product in there. I guess. Little product. Yeah. You got it. You're going on TV. Yeah. Yeah. You want to um, look like a schmuck. You know, I guess in my in my day to day life, typically I would just do nothing. Uh, okay. <laughs> normally, <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess if you've seen when you've seen me on TV, typically, yeah, I mean, shower in the morning, a little bit of you know, curly hair product, whatever the gel or whatever. So you don't even know what you use. You're just like whatever's in the bathroom, whatever my wife purchased for me to control this. Uh, essentially. Yeah. It probably smells like lavenders and honeysuckle. <laughs> Lavender and honeysuckle? If it's his wife buying it, I'm sure it's girl hair stuff. That's a good point. Right? I don't know. Anything in a purple bottle. That's what I use. Um, Holy also wants to know: Did you really and win regional spelling bee runner-up in 1995? Yeah, devastating. That was <sighs> that was terrible. Wait, is like runner-up like second, second place? place? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, would uh, be well, yeah. Tell so us like, about this. Yeah, I watch I, those sometimes, man. It was one of those where, like, if I would have won, then I would have gone to the thing in Washington D.C. that's on Ooh. ESPN and everything. Oh man, dude, um, my brother is all about yeah. that. That's crazy. What was the word? Don't ask uh, me. <laughs> yeah, the, I know what word I lost on. It was nourish. <laughs> it was an easy the, word. The so word was, was like uh, it was a word that I still even. Since then, I feel like I've almost never hear it in everyday life ever. <laughs> the word was exigency, e x i g e n c y, right? Was the, was, the, was the word. <laughs> so I don't. Know. That's a. Um, and how old were you? Sixth grade. At sixth grade, yeah, it was a middle. It was a middle school thing. Yeah, probably not a word you heard a lot. Uh, so point. there, there was actually. Um, on the front page of the local section of the paper, there was actually a picture of me sitting there in the chair, like with looking up towards the ceiling, like after I knew I had lost, I was about to lose. Oh, <laughs> that's so Do you have it framed somewhere? Like just to, it's like my, your inspiration. I don't know. Poster. I don't know. I don't know if my I don't know if my parents still have it. But. Oh, I'm sure they do. My, my I think my mom still has my teeth when I was growing up. That oh, mm, she's not a serial killer. I just. <laughs> My mom used to keep my teeth in those little film canisters. Do you remember when like, Ew, yeah. film came in the little black canisters? <gasps> I think it's gross, period. It is. I'm not yeah, going to I'm not, I'm not giving my kids them. money for their teeth. They don't get paid for something that naturally happens. I'm not going to pay her for getting a period. I'm not going to pay her for losing teeth. That's fair. Like, I'm just going to, you lost your tooth. Great, we're going to toss it. I don't need to keep your nasty little kid teeth. I feel okay about that. I don't know. 
Anyway, sorry. What's your take on keeping? <laughs> this is the Our next pressing question. The next question. You pay question. your children for normal bodily functions happening. Like, hey, you took a crap in the toilet. You Here's get a dollar. <laughs> no, you're supposed to do that. If your teeth didn't fall out, then I'd know. And I'd pay you for them. Your thoughts? <laughs> oh, oh I, I certainly haven't thought about any of these questions. <laughs> We only asked the hard hitting questions. We well, stumped him. He's not answering that. Him. Boom! Stumped Boom. Alex Jacob. Uh, Where's uh, my check? Uh, I don't get it. Can I <laughs> confirm or deny? You can phone a friend. <laughs> you can phone a friend. That's not Jeopardy. Um, oh. Other question. Uh, someone asked, what are the answers for the next trivia round? <laughs> uh, hey, that's cheating, Shay. That's it cheating, has, Shay. It hasn't, hasn't been written yet. Well, that's yeah. So you're you're like the, <laughs> the professor who writes his things at the last second because you were coming up with your questions right before last time. How do you pick your questions? Uh, I, don't, uh, I mean, I, I I have notes. I have like notes from studying for Jeopardy that have uh, um, like yeah, flashcards. Um, it's kind of more just like a document on my computer that just has all sorts of stuff in it. So I can kind of look through that and see if there's anything interesting. The only problem with that is if I do that too much, then all my questions are coming from Jeopardy, which is kind of lame. But uh, I, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, when you're, you know, if looking through lists sometimes is good. Like, you know, if, you, if you're trying to write trivia, just like, oh, let me look through the best picture list or the best uh or state capitals or you know maybe i could see something to ask about there like which these two start with the letter m or you know something like that looking at looking at lists you can get a lot of trivia questions from um, yeah that makes sense and what was like th this is always the thing i'm curious about the different like ways that contestants like study for jeopardy and things like that so once you knew you were picked like what did you do to get ready um I kind of was doing it already, uh, mm -hmm. although actually I kind of stopped a little bit because they had taken so long to call me that I uh, so I kind of slacked off a, a little bit. But <laughs> uh, you know, just the just the same thing I was doing, just going back through old games, kind of making notes of, as to what I didn't know, and um, just kind of repetition, repetition, keep going through the notes and. You know, trying to learn everything. Yeah. Uh, it's boring stuff. No, that's, I mean, I think people are always interested in that, though, because there's so many different ways to go about trying to prepare for this, and every contestant has, like, a different story of what they did. So some are super hardcore and are like, I had binders, and others are like, well, eh. you know, I just kind of knew stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you do different stuff. You kind of go back through the games and try and see if you can figure out uh, kind of different ways to almost hack the uh, the writers, you know. Um, did like, you, yeah, did you read up a lot about opera? I feel like that's a thing that people have to know. Sure, I mean, sure. Uh, you know, I was pretty well covered in basically anything that comes up on Jeopardy. So like, yeah, opera and Shakespeare and Bible and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, art and classical music and, all, and then, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Someone wants to know what happened to the Wheel of Fortune voice you promised us during the Tournament of Champions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been. Uh, yeah. Been right? <laughs> Wait, so I, I think I might have missed that one. So, so give me some context for this. Uh, it was just it was just a tweet that I said that uh, I was gonna um, give all my answers like uh, a Wheel of Fortune contestant would. So, it, so it would be like, like what is Tale of Two <laughs> Cities? <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh, <laughs> that would have been amazing. That would have been, uh, they might have gotten a little like, tiresome <laughs> after once or twice. <laughs> is this him trying to freak out the contestants? Yeah, this is a strategy. It's really a yeah. voice. Twitter, if, upset if, I could, about uh, these guys. if I could have kept it up the whole time, it would have been some impressive performance. You also have to like scream it because I always feel like they, yeah, they yell, yell it right, like right. as if. if like, I like think they don't have microphones on or something. Right, right. I don't, know. I don't know how that works. I'm sure there's a reason they do it, but I they mean, must, I know why they, they talk. And they seem out of breath, like the wheel is hard to spin. Yeah. So they're like, oh, what is? <laughs> don't say what is on Wheel of Fortune. 
<laughs> yeah, but he is. Yeah, they obviously, they obviously. I was in being Alex impersonating someone who is being Norman Reedus for now. Yeah. Do these do these questions come up at the same time? Because that's hilarious, and I understand. What color are the scissors you own, Alex? And this is a reference <laughs> to the other day. I was surprised that people didn't know this. The other day, he asked in trivia um, about the color of the Fisker's scissors, which Kristen, you know what color they are, right? The Fisker? I don't even know the who Fisker that is. Fisker scissors? Everybody has them. They're those orange scissors everybody has. They're called Fiskers? Fiskers. I would yeah. not have known that. Apparently, you should have said the scissors you used as a kid? No, no. These like are the grown kid up scissors? scissors? No, these are grown up scissors. I don't know. These are the ones called... you have to grow into. I don't know yeah. scissor brands. They're like yeah. the most. So, what color are the scissors you own now? I don't know if I have those uh, orange scissors. Uh, oh. I, may, I may not have those. I'm sorry. I have <laughs> orange. Yeah, I have orange and purple Fiskers in my office. Nice. So. Yeah. This is a weird thing that we're talking about right now. Well, it was asked. I know, I just... And I'm not sure if Holy is asking if you no, like No, that was red. Shay. No, no, no. Oh. oh. I don't know if Holy's asking if you prefer red or orange scissors. Or if scissors? you're colorblind. Maybe. So do you prefer red or orange scissors? Uh, it sounds like he's put the wrong answer last night and he's trying to angle somehow to make red scissors correct. I don't know. I don't know if that's what he's going for. I don't I don't know. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm not I'm not sure we understand the question. <laughs> Feel free to rephrase Holy and tell us. Kia wants to know what was this took me a second because I was like, what does he mean? What was Alex like? This is Alex. What was <laughs> Alex Trebek like? And I'm sure you get asked this a lot. Yeah, that's definitely the uh, number one question yeah. that anybody asks about Jeopardy. Um, you don't really get like any interaction besides what you would see on TV, like in the oh, interview okay. segments or, um, you know, when we're talking after the game, um, when the credits are rolling. Um, right. But, uh, you know, I like him. Um, he, he takes questions from the audience during breaks, uh, which is pretty cool. And he has like a really quick sense of humor and um, seems well-meaning and he's rooting for everybody to do well. And yeah. Uh, He's pretty funny. He uh, likes to make jokes about uh, how he how he drinks a lot. That's <laughs> his running joke when he uh, is taking questions from the audience. Oh, interesting. Uh, I've always wanted to be in the audience there, but for some reason I've never I've never done it. Um, what was my thought that I just had related to that? I yeah, like, you should, oh. you should uh, go check it out. I think. Yeah. The other. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's because you're in the you're in LA, right? Ish, yeah, in that oh, general ish. meeting. And ish. in fact, uh, we were, Krista was with you, maybe it was with producer Bree. We were in line for the Craig Ferguson show one day, and the yeah. girl who was in line with us happened to have just been on Jeopardy earlier that day. And the poor girl just like tanked on it. Like, I mean, just horribly so. Didn't make it to yeah. Final Jeopardy. It, yeah. was, it was really sad, but she was a delightful girl. There's mm. that. But the thing I was thinking of is um, Brad Rutter says the thing that he gets asked the most is actually what is Ken Jennings like because of the tournament. Or the, uh, <laughs> the What do you call the big one that's not the Tournament of Champions, but it's like everybody? Uh, they did an ultimate. That was what it was. Or they did a Battle of the Decades recently. Too. Yeah, Battle of the Decades might have been what it was. Where they, or maybe it was from the Tournament of Champions. But so now, yeah. are you amongst like the top top winners who next time they have something like that will get to be on it? Uh yeah, well I mean fingers crossed, but yeah, I I, I would hope so. I, hopefully. Uh, what did your t total come out to? Like, what's your total winnings so far? Um, I won about one fifty. On. My, in the first time and then 250 for the tournament so about 400,000 that's crazy that's yeah. a lot to win on something um i think this, it just i think it just barely put me in the top 10 i think oh wow that's it seems like it would be higher than that but um i guess that like that has been a thing especially since they got rid of the game limits that people win a lot of money on this um these are these two questions i, I like both of these uh, the first one is what music do you listen to Uh, uh, I I kind of listen to whatever. And that's not a good answer, but kind of, kind of a lot of just like pop or whatever is pop uh, on the chart. Yeah, I partly to like partly intentionally to like uh, make myself be aware of of, of new music for trivia purposes. But that's uh, a good point. Yeah. But 
you know, I, I, I kind of just like it too. I mean, it's just like, I, I'm not a huge, uh, I'm not a huge music guy. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't really listen to music a lot, but, uh, how do you, uh, you feel know, like about, a good catchy song? How do you feel about Justin Bieber? Music. Um, you know, I don't mind that the, uh, uh, sorry, I don't mind the uh, sorry song. I um, feel like I don't know if I know what's what that this is. This new one. Oh, maybe I haven't heard it yet. Right? That one. Yeah. Is it? Um, I Alex didn't... is a step ahead on the pop music here. No, I didn't. Oh, I'm I, didn't, I, didn't I didn't really. I didn't really like. What do you mean? Oh, oh that's the one I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I do like. Aren't they not all the same? Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah, I only like the one that he did that they mash up with like the Justin song. I like the newer one a little better. I, it's, I mean, it's pretty crazy how he's come back and what I think broken some record when he has like eighteen songs. All the songs are on the top one hundred now or something like that. Like his entire album. Wow, that's insane. And I mean, granted, yeah. people don't really buy a lot of music, so I mean, I guess it's easier to do that than it once was. But still, that's pretty impressive. Well, he's, yeah, he's come back with a vengeance. Um, oh, the question just disappeared that someone asked that was related to music, and it was something about what's your favorite song? Did say what's your favorite song ever? Maybe. Do you have a favorite song ever? That's a hard one. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no. Let's just say no on that one. Okay. There's a there's a nay. Do you guys have a, do you guys have a favorite song? I do. It's. I, like I have a first and second place. My first favorite song is "Don't Dream It's Over" by Crowded House, and my second is "Sunday Bloody Sunday" by U2. Oh. Wow, you just had those holstered at the ready. Oh yeah, ever since I was in like first grade, same same two songs. It's kind of a sad one. It is a little sad. I I'm a dismal person. <laughs> a bit of a downer. There. I'm a I'm a downer. What are you gonna do, mm -hmm. Kristen? Do you have a favorite song? Um, my favorite song is um I Go Back because I'll tell you why. It's got two. Things why I like that song. <laughs> One, it's because it talks about how music takes you back to like you hear that song and you're like, oh, I remember the first time I heard this, I was here. Or you, lots of times, you associate it with like a either a sad time or a good time, and you kind of associate it with something. So it's one of those. It's like a smell, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's what I really love. That's one of the things actually I love about music is like you can hear something that you haven't heard for years, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm in 1998. This is amazing, and I remember this and this, and it brings back all these things. And second, um, just the, not only the fact that it does it, but that song in particular kind of takes me back to a time where it's like I had, it was just like a time in my life where I was like, before I was really an adult. So I was young and I was like with my friends and it was like this kind of our summer anthem this one summer. Um, I like so, that. Yeah, it kind of took me back, but it kind of sums up what I love about music of how it's like, whether or not it's, you know, what people would call good music. I was like, if, if for you, it has some kind of person you know like it, it hits you in a way because it, you heard it at the right time or the lyrics you know meant something to the right time that's what i love about music you know it's like whether or not people are like oh i hate so and so you're like yeah but this song really hit me i like i needed it at this time in my life i feel like it can also be such a healing kind of thing also sorry I don't know, I don't like that's, that's sweet i like that so is, is this pretty much how you get interviewed? Like when you don't know how to answer, you just ask the interviewers what they just asked. I know. You I know. was like, I like that you just turned it around. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> but I, I, if you turn I, it around, we'll just answer whatever you ask. Us. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, totally. Actually, we haven't been to our top three yet either. We absolutely no. We, I, we we may have I'll, to have you back I'll, again. I'll say, uh, okay. I'll I'll say uh, "Power of Love" by Huey Lewis of the News. <laughs> oh, good one. Why? Uh well I guess the Back of the Future connection helps. Sure, yep, that's a that's a great one, great movie, great song. I always like Huey Lewis because he played Peyton. He played um not Peyton. He played um Haley's dad on One Tree Hill. Oh track. yeah, there you go. He also uh lives in my home county, and so everybody I knew always knew him. So there's yeah. that. We'll ask you, since it's getting super late and we don't want to hold you, but maybe would you be willing to come back sometime and chat with us again? Sure, so of, course, ignore, of course. So we don't ignore you for the first 20 minutes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're like, of course. Yeah. And we're rambling about weird things. But I like this oh. final, final question someone asked you here. How do your friends describe you? Uh, how do my friends describe me? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess late, I guess like, kind of how you was how you saw me on the show like laid back or um definitely i would say laid back would be, would come up 
What was the word though? <laughs> Didn't they say it was a uh, some kind of sociopath? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, sociopath. Uh, <laughs> You know, nerd god, serial killer. Yeah. Um, That's the usual. Like, you know, just he your saves our teeth. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Little Kodak. Oh, um, yeah, laid back seems to be the <laughs> the term. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna, if I mean, that's gonna be what you're known for. Maybe. Maybe com yeah, yeah, that's competitive. Maybe. Yeah, that's an interesting like mix of things. Yeah. Competitive, but, but like, also yeah. like man. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, um. It is it is an interesting dichotomy. Yeah, but it came across in the show that way. Like clearly, you're a competitive dude, a little bit of a, a risk taker, and so forth. But also, like, this is what's happening. So yeah. this is me. <laughs> this <laughs> is real. This is me. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now. Gonna let the light. Okay, shine I'm sorry. Me. That's I, Camp Rock. I, thank you, guys. That's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> We knew you were channeling your That's inner Demi, inner Demi Lovato. That's actually going to be his new favorite song. Yeah, new favorite song. Check it out, Alex. You Spotify that ish. <laughs> Camp Rock. Oh, I, yeah. I should have said. Uh, Don't try to Shazam it. It won't yeah. come up. <laughs> you're Sorry, you should have said what? I should have said the Fraser theme song. Oh, <laughs> missed opportunities. All right. Well, we should let you go. It's a million o'clock, especially where you are, East Coast, right? Oh, is that where you live? Uh, Central. What? What's Central. That? Central. Yeah, so yeah, it's late. Bad. But thank you so much for joining us this evening. We yeah, had fun. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah, me too. Okay. I, I know we're a bit overwhelming, but I hope, I hope it was <laughs> yeah. a, a good time. And we'll hopefully yeah, have you back again sometime and join in on your, your trivia as well. Uh, as a final note, uh, where can people find you on the internet? Anything you want to plug for our audience? Uh, yeah, uh, Twitter, who is Alex Jacob? Um, I'm going to be putting up a blog, I think. Um, it's at uh, going to be at jeopardycoach.com. Uh, oh. I think there, that, uh, the site's actually up there now, but it just has old it has old stuff on it. I haven't put anything new up there, but uh, okay. that uh, may be something to look out for. But uh, Twitter, you can find me on Twitter. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, and you have an excellent night. Oh, you guys Alex. too. Yes, and thank for you. the fan cave, I'm Corrigan Vaughn. <laughs> and I'm Kristen Lauderell. Peace out, everybody. Take it easy, kids. All right, let me stop that action.